Hello, hi. I'm back again today. We are in full fall season, so I've got my mug and lots of fall colors. Look at, look at, it's freaking bats. I love Halloween. Um, today I'm back to talk about the musical, or I should say the filmed musical, Diana. Uh, it's currently on Netflix. It was released October 1st, so not super long ago. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna talk about it. It seems like this year and next year is just like musical season, movie musical season, which <laughs> um, is interesting. I do think that most of the movie musicals that have been made are not that great this year. We've had some some bad ones and um, this isn't technically a movie musical, but it is a film musical. And I don't have the most amazing things to say about it. <laughs> Um, the choices were made, choices were made, um, and we're gonna just talk about that. And I really want to talk about like exploitation, um, and what that means, especially for someone as big as Princess Diana. I will, I promise, I will next week or whenever, I will be making a video about something that I actually like. <laughs> um, I want to do something that I like so that you can see things that I like and what I look for and yada yada because I feel like mostly I've been doing um, things that I don't like which I don't think is a bad thing but I would just like to do something fun that I care about so let's get into it so I guess first I can go into my likes like what I liked about the musical and I mean it's not long um I like the costumes I think costumes were really nice um they kind of really focused on like the iconic looks that diana had because obviously fashion and her looks was kind of a big thing that she was known for and i really liked that i mean i knew every single look i was like oh yeah that's that look oh yeah that's that look it looked good it looked put together it looked very elegant um the costumes did their job and they did what they had to do and yeah that was nice um i like the costumes a lot i don't have any bad things to say about that that's it for my likes The main reason, as we'll get into dislikes and things that I have to say about it, this musical plays it really safe in the form of like, it doesn't want to make anybody necessarily the villain, which I understand, but I do think you kind of have to hold certain people accountable. This is a story about a real person. This is not a fictional, like, this is not something fictional. And I kept watching the musical and being like, okay, like, this is... This is very like cheesy and cheeky and like it, it, it seems very comical but like this is a real person's life and that's incredibly disturbing to me. I remember when this musical was first announced and when they were putting out some little you know teaser trailers and kind of sneak peeks that was my first thought was like okay do we ever stop to think if this is something that we should be doing. The past year we've seen kind of a resurgence in Princess Diana things, or I should say the past couple of years. Obviously there is uh, the new musical that's coming out with, musical, there's the new movie that's coming out with Kristen Stewart, um, that one is interesting. We've got this musical that's come out, we've got The Crown, which recently came out I think this year or last year, which has a season about Princess Diana. Um, and then we've also got like Meghan Markle, the whole thing that happened with kind of exposing the palace and colonialization and, and racism in, in Buckingham Palace, which again, I'm not shocked. <laughs> I'm not shocked about that, but that kind of really, I think, was a moment that really sparked more engagement with what the royals are, what Buckingham Palace is. This musical kind of pushes that all aside which I think is interesting. Something that is fun about Princess Diana is that she kind of defied the norms. She kind of went against the grain. She kind of mocked the royal. She made them look foolish, which they are. I mean, they're a product of colonization and whether you like them or not, whether you like kings, queens, whatever princesses, you do have to realize that if they are European, they're gonna be colonizers. They're gonna have a really intense bad history that is rooted in slavery, colonization, obviously, white supremacy, 
everything like it's not you cannot separate the two like the jewels that the queen wears are not her own <laughs> so when you think about that it's very important that's something that people liked about princess Di is that she was different in that sense and she seemed to really not care about it and she seemed to think that being royal was stupid and musical doesn't really understand that and it doesn't really capture any of the interesting things about princess diana if we're going to do musicals about royals if we're going to do musicals about a real people especially in 2021 it just feels so off i think this musical could have done well maybe like 10 years ago or 15 years ago but at this point now that we know so much about her story this musical just doesn't fit so the plot of this musical is a little bit strange they make some very interesting decisions and choices the musical is called diana but i would not say that this musical is about princess diana in fact it's more about charles and camilla than it is anybody else basically the plot kind of revolves around her meeting him she talks about being 19 and him being 32 that's a red flag and they never like they're not self-aware of that they're just like ha ha 19 and he's and i'm like we should kind of maybe talk about that a little bit but that's not really brought up um basically it's about the meeting and then it kind of goes straight into charles and camilla being together which i thought was was funny like we never really have a lot of backstory about princess die we don't really learn a lot about her life it's mostly told to us like she'll say like oh my mom left me or you know i don't believe in divorce which is something that she did actually believe in but like we never see that we never we never see her actions we never see her childhood we never see anything like that it just kind of is like yeah this is her as she's post met charles which i think is kind of a disservice if we're gonna do a musical about someone a biopic musical i think that we deserve to talk about them before so basically yeah they go into mainly charles and camilla's story and then it ends up becoming like a parallel between diana charles and camilla and like that dynamic which makes it not a musical about diana i mean he even gets the last word in the show which i was very shocked about like it, it just is interesting that that if the musical is gonna be about somebody don't they deserve to tell their story and this is where i get into those ideas of like exploitation and what it means to like market off of somebody's life i mean i'm assuming that they got permission from the estate or from the royals to do this musical and i mean that definitely comes clear for a reason i'll explain in a second but my question is like what does it mean to take somebody's life and put it onto a stage adaptation, a movie, whatever, especially if that person is not here to tell their story. I feel really strongly about that just because I imagine if I was not here and someone decided to take my life and just kind of write all over it and add their own edits and choose whoever they wanted, I'd be pretty upset. It's kind of like that new adaptation that's like coming out about Stagecoach Mary and like Stagecoach Mary does not look like herself like i think she would be pretty upset <laughs> like that doesn't look like me that doesn't sound like me that's not what i want to say like people just are thinking about that and i think that's exploitation at its finest now i'm gonna look up the definition of what that means because i think it's important to talk about definitions and if we want to change our own de definitions of things couldn't say that so exploit so according to the dictionary the word exploitation is one the action or fact of treating someone unfairly in order to benefit from their work or, or the second option is the action of making use and benefiting from resources i mean in this musical they are benefiting off of someone for their own work and they're benefiting from diana's resources her life her her everything I don't think that that's fair and I think if we're gonna do that then we deserve it we deserve the right for it to be good to be a good artistic choice and I think that Princess Diana deserves to not have Charles be the central of her story this musical is so surface level on what it means not only to be 
a woman but also on what it means to be trapped in a marriage that is abusive in sorts i mean also what it means to have your childhood taken away from you because she kind of did she was 19 um and also what it means just to like try and be someone be your own person right like be your own person as being a woman and being in the eye of the public obviously there's another layer on that with princess diana being so much in the public and having paparazzi and her being like kind of an, a mouthpiece for the royal family right but this musical doesn't do that in fact it makes diana look weak she becomes obsessed with him with him loving her even when he constantly calls her terrible names abuses her yells at her um they kind of make it very vapid they make diana seem like she doesn't care about her kids she only cares about being with charles and she will do anything if not everything to be with this man which is just like what um there's also a moment where like she's trying to find her fashion and they kind of make it like a oh girls like fashion which is not the case the reason why people like diana's fashion is because it's a kind of reflection of herself it shows her fun side it shows the fact that she's trying to become her own person that's the thing about fashion especially when it comes to women a lot of the times we're reduced to one thing and sometimes fashion is the one way for us to break out of that mold i'm not going to get into that but they really do a disservice in that point like they don't quite understand it they try but they don't and there's one other thing that like really got me oh okay so basically diana is known for her advocacy her politics i'm gonna put maybe some clips here another reason why people genuinely loved her was because she seemed to not be above it all like royals have a very you know kind of above it all stance and diana seemed to be very genuine and kind and a lot of the things that people really loved about her was her humanitarian efforts you know her help with the cancer inst uh, institution i guess cancer research um also the aids crisis she donated a lot of money to that i mean this was at a time of revolutionary when people didn't even want to touch or look or be in the same room with someone who possibly could have hiv or aids and we don't really get that there's 46 minutes left of the musical when we finally get a little snippet of her going to a hospital that has some patients who have hiv aids right 45 minutes left of the musical and we finally get to that moment that is the only time the only time when charles is not included in her narrative and after that moment they make it right once again about charles like honestly diana really isn't in this musical that much it, for her to be her musical it's just such a travesty and i'm so sorry for any fans of princess diana because you are not gonna be getting what you're getting and also the fact of like there's no someone else was talking about this but there's no like uh revelations there's nothing really all that interesting about the musical it's like you might as well just watch the crown to be honest or anything else you might as well watch the interview that prince harry did um like he tells more tea about his mother than this musical does and so in that it plays it really safe and it's just boring it's not interesting it doesn't make any revelations it just is just so surface level it's so flat and even in a sense of like maybe you didn't have to tell drama but you could have still made it more about princess diana what's the point if it's not going to be her story and it's going to be told through the mouth of a men speaking of the mouth of a man um at the end of this musical i was really trying to think okay who is this musical for what's its purpose why is it made this way and why does it seem so surface level not only to princess Di, but also women to women like the characters like the women characters just were written very flatly the women were written as if they were through the eyes of a man so I did do some research and I did look it up and I was correct. Um, there's one woman who did choreography for the musical, but everybody who produced, directed, wrote the book and the music are men. This is what I mean when I talk about exploitation, not only in Broadway, um, but also just musicals and media in general. 
Um, if you watch some of my black musical series, <clears throat> I do a much better job at talking about it, to be honest. Um, but just about like who is in the creation of making these stories is very important. Like, yes, what you see on stage is great, but also be mindful of who is in those rooms, who's making those decisions, because they might be t not telling an accurate story. Um, and that can that can do damage. I just think like a lot of the times in Broadway we, we're, we work so hard to pretend to be like woke and to try and get those stories out there that we don't ever stop to think do I have the right to this story? Have I been given access to the story? And what does it mean if I take the story on as I am? I don't understand why they felt like they needed to tell it and why they felt like they could have that piece of her. I just the audacity the mandacity, the caucasity, there's a lot going on. <laughs> I just, Broadway, this is why where Broadway really gets me because I just don't think that they understand there's some things that they just don't need to touch and they don't need to like have. Like I didn't even watch the Tonys this year because it just felt so like wrong. Like out of everything that has been exposed about the Tonys and all the musicals and, and all of these actors quitting and the Actors' Equity Union, like why are we still having the Tonys? And if we're gonna have a Tony Award, what, shouldn't we address that? Just when we already have narratives about Princess Di, you can read so many books, you can read so, you can watch so many movies, you can listen to podcasts. Like the woman is exploited, <laughs> her life, her story. But I think, especially in this musical, I do feel like it was not handled tastefully. Like I just felt like the entire musical, it was just so cheesy and corny, and like oh my god, even the lyrics. The lyrics are so bad. They're laughable. <clears throat> They're not good. <laughs> They're not good. And the singing is, is fine. Like, it wasn't... It was good. Like, they were fine at singing. Um, but, like, they spent so much time... <clears throat> they spent so much time trying to hit, like, the perfect notes and trying to, you know, have the perfect set and trying to have all the lighting that they forgot about the story and the emotion and, like, the core acting. Like, it even felt like the performances were flat. And I do want to say that um, the person who pray, played Princess Diana, no shade to her. I'm sure they're a wonderful person. But like the acting was not good. It was so dry. But again, I'm going to give this person a pass because the, you, you can only get what you're given. You know what I mean? The, the book is not written great. You can tell that it's not. So I'm not surprised. Let's get on to accountability and and what this musical does. I wrote down, this musical fails by not holding anyone accountable. It plays it safe. What I mean by accountability is someone in every story has to be held accountable for the hurt that they give. I talked about this in my Cinderella um, musical movie review. Yeah, it is a musical. Um, and like, they don't hold anyone safe and again I think this is because they have that thing with the royals but it doesn't want to hold anyone accountable it doesn't it doesn't want to make Charles the villain it doesn't want to make Camilla the villain it doesn't want to make um the queen the villain and it'll try every now and then to like kind of be like but uh -huh. but like it doesn't make a strong stance um especially when you think about the fact of like s definitely they are the villains only because I don't want to say villain they do damage to Diana they do have accountability in changing and ruining her life mainly because they did find and coax her when she was 19 that's in the musical they say it <laughs> so like she's a child she's 19 so you did change her life and you have accountability and you have stake in that and they don't they don't want to point fingers they just kind of play it safe and there's um kind of a, a part of the musical in the end closer to the end when finally finally she's talking to the queen and i here's something interesting throughout the entire thing basically they're saying that the queen didn't know any of the things that were happening in their household in their relationship she didn't know he was being abusive she didn't know all the things he said and i'm a skeptic i'm a skeptic because i find it interesting that in every single one of these accounts, including Princess Di's account, including Meghan Markle's account, including all of their accounts, they say the, how the queen is lovely and she's wonderful and she doesn't do any wrong and she was always very kind. 
but like if you are the variable in this story and you know that harm is going on and you have the power to step in why do you not step in but in the musical they try and kind of say like well what she didn't know you know she didn't step in um and she sings this song basically about how there's this girl who wants to marry a captain and she didn't and she was a captain i don't know and I, I don't care um <laughs> i don't um but basically it's just like her i was a girl who had dreams once and everyone deserves to have dreams but my duty is to england and your duty is not to england actually i think england could probably go without the monarchy like they don't need you but okay um anyways she sings this whole song and kind of walks off and it's just very gaslight gatekeep girl boss like why do we not make the queen accountable in this story she's in the story she has stakes in the story but she just hands off she doesn't have anything to do with it she's just whatever it feels so wrong and a product of white supremacy honestly and colonization which i mean i know my takes are always very strong but i will say <clears throat> this musical is 100 percent complicit in in uh, colonization and in white supremacy um you can't have a musical about the royals and try and make them look good it's just not gonna work in 2020 not for me not for any of my other fellow people of color not for the other white people that have been colonized <clears throat> colonized by the world's like it's not it's weird to me and especially in a musical about diana a person who was kind of a critic of the world's and didn't seem to like being in it i mean who would like what i don't understand why we made that choice and especially in musicals when we pretend to be very like woke and yeah musicals are the way you know we're gonna we're gonna change the world and we have the power this does not feel like it has the power to do anything and it felt like it could have been an easy tweak to change things and to actually like make a memorable and poignant day in a musical they could have done it they just were lazy and didn't and that's when i really get upset because i'm like you're getting all of his money all of his money and you don't want to make the points that are valid that maybe the royal palace did mess up and they are complicit it's not just the paparazzi paparazzi aside <laughs> of what happened like princess diana died it is not a cute story it's not cheeky it's not funny this is somebody's life and there are real stakes at this i mean harry and william are still alive like this is not like something that everybody is removed i think personally it's too soon for princess diana musical i think it was too soon why do it and in the current climate that we're in right now there was no point or purpose to do a musical like this. I, I mainly made this video because I was like, if I watch this, I have no other choice but to make a video on it because like, otherwise I'm just wasting my time. Um, obviously there's even more you can get into. You can get into the music, you can get into the weird choreography, you can get into the weird blocking, you can get into the everything about this show. There's so many things that are just like askew. It's not the worst musical I've seen, but it's just why? Like, why did we make this right now? Like, it just makes no sense to me. Um, and I'm not a fan of it. And I think it's a little exploitative. And when I think about, like, the fact that there's probably going to be merchandise about Diana, the musical, it just feels, it feels icky to me. It feels icky to me, especially because she's not here to say yes and tell her. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a very icky situation and it makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, so, yeah. If you watch it on Netflix, what did you think? What do you think about the music? Were there any iconic lines that were just funny? Because this musical is funny, but not for the reasons you think it is. It's hilarious. I laughed so many times, like in a sad way, but like it is, it's funny and not in the way that you would think. Um, so yeah, what did you think of the musical? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Love interacting with you. So glad that we get to have a discussion down below. So let's keep it going. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.